Hi, mama of many family and friends all around the world. I just wanted to take a few moments and steal away to wish every one of you a very happy and blessed Christmas. I pray that Jesus will be the gift that you will be continually unwrapping this Christmas time, that you will be growing in knowing him. For they that know their God shall be strong and shall do great things. I pray that Jesus will show himself to you. He will reveal himself. That word revelation means a revealing, a greater revealing of Jesus for your life, for your circumstances this Christmas time. Because when Jesus shows up, he shows off in our lives and everything that is adverse to you, every enemy that is raging against you. I declare and I decree that every knee shall bow before the name of Jesus and every circumstance in your life that is against you right now shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I am speaking complete victory over your life and over your family, over your situations right now. God does not work in the partial victory. If you haven't seen the complete victory just yet, it's because your God hasn't finished with you yet. He is still working in the unseen, behind the scenes. And in fact, just as I'm speaking now, I am reminded of driving just the other last week, taking our 16 year old son to school. And in the back, I'd had to uh, load into the car my our darling little five year old Judah, who'd already broken up from school. And he was in his dressing gown. It was icy. It was snowy. It was cold. It was feeling super Christmassy. Actually, it wasn't at that moment in, in time. Uh, 20 to 8 in the morning um, but as I was driving through to school with Joel I was saying to we went past the golden arches McDonald's and I said to uh, Judah darling on the way back I'll tell you what let's have a um, a quick mummy treat and we're going to pull in and would you like a McDonald's breakfast well he was over the moon until I drove past McDonald's and then there was tears there was commotion from the back he didn't understand why we were going past McDonald's he then set it in his heart I know big mummy fail right my fault why did I mention it then at that moment and um, as I then explained to to Joel he was said you uh, Joel and Judy he said mummy you meanie you meanie and I said oh darling mummy's not being mean right now mummy has to take Joel to school first and it would be terrible if I was to just dump Joel out of the car here in no man's land when he's not at the destination that we need to get him to and in that moment I just felt like the Holy Spirit speak to me because I was going through and walking through a difficult time that I didn't understand in my life fully, but I was trusting him beyond my understanding because the word of God tells us in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. You can't lean on your own understanding. It'll fail. You'll fall over if you try and trust what you see, what you feel. Uh, what you're facing, your circumstance, but we must lean in Jesus. In all our ways, we just acknowledge him, we look to him, and we trust that he will make our path straight. He will make everything perfect in his time. And I was in one of those times, I'd felt like I was uh, on God's God's journey, on his path of calling and blessing and family and ministry. And I hit a an unknown in the road I didn't understand where the Lord was taking me and in that moment the Lord showed me how much we can be just like Judah God will never leave us he won't ditch us he won't kick us out of the car just like I wouldn't kick my 16 year old out of the car until I got him to where he needed to be which was school Judah didn't understand that we were on the journey and we had to go to Joel's school first before I could drive back and I could get Judah his treat which is was his McDonald's breakfast and all of the tears were turned to elation and joy and now I'm just using this very uh, funny silly illustration if you like that is literally just fired into my mind whilst I've gone live with this now I haven't thought of it before now but I'm just using that to illustrate to you maybe the Lord has taken you places this last year and you hadn't you never expected to go there listen let me be vulnerable and very real with you I wasn't going to share this either uh, it speaks in in Psalms uh, by the rivers of Babylon where we sat down and there we wept when we remembered 
Zion. And it speaks of in that verse, in that in those verses in that psalm, that the uh, the captives required of the children of God, the children of Israel, uh, a song. And they said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? The Lord brought that verse to me when I was driving into a place I never expected to be going. I never expected to be going and taking my mum, uh, who has been battling uh, dementia and double dementia and Alzheimer's uh, this year, this past year. But we always fight from a position of victory. And I thank God for his strength and his power that has been with me continually and with my family in miraculous ways beyond where my eyes can see uh, and could see this year. And as I was going into a strange land, a strange place, maybe you feel like you're in a strange land in a strange place this Christmas time. Maybe you felt that this past year. Maybe you'll find yourself in some strange lands and strange places next year. Well, know as the Lord impressed on my heart that let this song of praise go up from your heart and from your life continually all your days and know that even behind the scenes Jesus is working and he will work a miracle in you he will never stop short of your miracle and Jesus wants you to know that if you haven't received the completion yet it's because oh my word <laughs> say happy Christmas to you Say happy, happy Christmas. Christmas. This is <laughs> Judah, the one who makes my heart and life complete. And I've just been telling a story about you. And when you got upset that you didn't think that mummy was taking you to McDonald's for your breakfast and you thought I was being a meanie. But really, we had to get somewhere first. And then God always makes everything perfect in his time, doesn't he? Well, that did that one, didn't it? So he's off. Love you, Judes. Um, so, yeah. Hey, I've said all that to say that all of God's promises for your life are yes and they are amen. So God's given his yes in his word. He's given you hundreds of promises. You can stand on them and state them as your claim no matter what because I want to declare to you today confidently, uh, thank you Judah, uh, that I cannot, you and I cannot base God's word on the level of our experience. But our experience must come up to the level of God's word every time. His word is final. His word wins. His word is the joy, the delight and the standard of my life. So I just wanted to, I didn't intend to encourage you with that, but I just want to encourage you from our reality, whatever you are facing, uh, just know continually that Jesus he is the reason for the season that you are in, just as he is the reason for this Christmas season. And whenever you praise him and you trust him, no matter what, when you know he is God, you are not. You will see miracles break out and work on your behalf. Let me tell you just one, actually. When I was in that strange land, a place I didn't expect to be, I call her Super Sarah. There was somebody the first day I was there with my mama, she was on all fours and she was always looking for something on the floor. And I heard her, my heart broke as she went past with nurses around her. And she was saying, stop tormenting me, stop tormenting me. Well, the next day when I was in, I was sat with my mama, um, helping my mum have lunch. And my mum kept saying to me, oh, Christine, you need to tell these people about Jesus. <laughs> you need to tell them about Jesus. And I said, well, who is Jesus, mama? And she said, as the different ones were going by, Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. I laughed and said, well, mama, I think you've just done that, haven't you? She'd be getting me evicted, for goodness sakes. But this darling super Sarah, she came and she stopped beside me on all fours. And I leant over in that moment and I knew that the Lord didn't want me to waste that opportunity. He had sent me in there to give his love to those who were lost, to some of the most forgotten of society. And I leant over and I said, Sarah, you won't find what you're looking for on the floor. <laughs> you've been searching all your life and what you've been looking for, his name is Jesus. Look up, Jesus loves you. In those moments, I poured in the gospel message and the good news of Jesus. I prayed over her. She didn't move. She stayed. Usually she's just continually circling. And then when I'd finished, the staff clocked it and they came running over to me in panic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Was she disturbing you? And I was not at all. When God sends you into a strange land 
and into a strange place. Know that that is your mission place in that season. And he is the reason. And when you don't understand, you trust him no matter what. He is God. We are not. And what I want to share with you prophetically today, coming round to what I had intended uh, to say from God's word, it speaks in Isaiah 9, verse 2 to 7. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. I'm going to give you seven prophetic keys and promises for your life this Christmas season and whatever season you find yourself in uh, that is going to, I know, strengthen and help you in your, uh, your walk with God. And just as we see here, maybe you feel like you're in a season of great deep darkness, uh, that, but the Lord promises you, you will see a great light this Christmas. Look up, just like Super Sarah. She just needed to look up and see Jesus. And you know what happened? I was in the hospital a couple of days later with my mama. She'd never stood. I'd never seen her upright. I'd never looked in her face, seen her eyes before. And I was standing in my mum's room with my 19 year old son. And this Sarah obviously heard my voice. I'd, she'd never seen me as far as I was aware, but she walked towards the voice. She'd heard the voice of Jesus speaking through me. She reached out her arms and she hugged me and she said, thank you. My son, my 19 year old witnessed that. I told him the story of pouring it out and ministering into Super Sarah, because what I've experienced is even whenever the mind has gone, the spirit within us carries on and the Lord is always reaching out for those who are lost to bring them, to bring his own, those he died for, home to him. And I know Super Sarah met with Jesus. There she was upright, hugging me. And I believe Jesus met with her in a very special way. So sometimes you have to go into darkness and those dark situations you're facing in your life. Will you allow God's glorious light, the light of Jesus to shine brightly in and through you? And will you trust him in the night seasons? Will you trust him in those dark hours of your soul? Because he alone is the one who will make us whole. <laughs> he is the one who is making us to be all that he wants us to be until Christ Jesus is fully formed in you and in me. So for those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Jesus has come and Jesus will shine brightly in your life this Christmas time. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you. So look, there's enlargement and promotion coming your way, child of God. There's great partying and celebrating and rejoicing. This is not the end of your story. It will all turn around for God's glory in Jesus name. And like as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden off their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod. And as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian, the boots of the warrior and the uniforms of blood stained, the uniforms that are blood stained by war will all be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us, a son, is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders. We often hear this at Christmas time. We often don't hear it in conjunction with those verses that have gone before that I'm going to unpack in these few moments for you. And I believe as you receive God's word, God's word is going to work mightily and powerfully in your life. In Jesus name, for a child is born to us, a son is given, the government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting father. That's our Jesus, prince of peace, his government and his peace will never, ever end. He will rule with fairness and justice. Hey, it may look like what you're going through isn't fair and it isn't just. The things in this world sometimes and life will suck the life of God out of you if you let it. Don't let it in Jesus name. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from his throne and his ancestor David for all eternity. 
the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of heaven's armies will make this happen. Do you know the Lord is passionate for his people? He is passionate for you. He is called saviour for a reason and he will not hesitate to rush to your aid and to save you out of anything that you are facing that is adverse to your life today in Jesus' name. So what has God promised here? He has promised one, light in darkness. He will send you into the darkness sometimes to bring out the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places. Those will be riches and treasures for your life that will stay with you for eternity. But they're also the treasures of darkness, souls, those who are lost, those who need Jesus. Will you go beyond the darkness and bring the light of life, the light of Jesus everywhere he leads you? Secondly, God promises here, enlargement, increase, favour, promotion. You have endured the test. Now I have prepared you for heaven's finest and best, says the Lord. Wow. Three, God promises celebrating, partying and rejoicing. He will give you beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness that will be lifted off you and everything against you will break off you into victory in Jesus' name. You, child of God, will go free in complete victory. Four, get ready to reap and weep no more, says the Lord. Recompense and reward, provision and power, protection and perfection for this life, for this time, for your life, for your family, for your circumstance, for this hour in Jesus' name. Five, a broken yoke and a broken rod. That is speaking of here in these verses, complete victory and freedom for your life. As I said before, he doesn't work in the partial victory, only complete victory. Hold on through the storm. God is not finished with you yet. Your complete miracle is in the making and you are a miracle in waiting for the glory of his name in Jesus' mighty name. Authority and divine destiny. So just know without a doubt, friend, that God is breaking that yoke off your life. A yoke is a burden. It's a heavy weight that you're carrying. It's sometimes when you're having to be taken places that you don't want to go, but you go those places and then at just the right time, that yoke is broken off you. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Will you learn from me? Will you follow me? Will you let me lead you? And I will take you into places of divine destiny and victory above and beyond your wildest dreams. Stay with me. Stay through the storm. Don't leave his side, child of God. Stay close. Look to him. When you don't know what to do, let your eyes continually be looking to the only one who will bring you through. Our God is a God of breakthrough. Number six, God promises, uh, or oh, before I say that, let me just say, the yoke shall be broken by the anointing. Jesus breaks every yoke, every burden, every bondage, every difficulty, every sickness off your life so you go free. The rod of the oppressor shall be no more. Like Moses was told to cast down his rod, and it became a snake. Then he was told to take up the snake by the tail and it became a rod again. The magicians did the same and what happened? Moses' snake gobbled up the others and they were no more. Only God's authority, rule and reign will ultimately prevail, says the Lord. The Lord is exposing and he is bringing down man-made structures and the idols set up to take our trust, time and our expectation from the Lord. God is jealous for his children. He is jealous for his people. He doesn't want us trusting medicine. He doesn't want us trusting in our money. He doesn't want us trusting in possessions. He doesn't want us trusting in the governments of this world. He wants us trusting no man-made structure is to prevail in our lives. Those rugs have very rapidly been pulled from underneath me until all I see is Jesus. And he now is my complete love of my life. 
all idols have gone. He is the only God, the only one worthy of my all and in him I trust. I pray for doctors and nurses, of course I do. I thank God for all that he has blessed us with and for food and for home, home for our home for <laughs> three times for our home. I'm obviously very thankful for our home, a roof over our head, especially as I'm looking outside and it's raining right now. Um, I'm very thankful for everything that he's given to us, a car to drive, but the things in this world have no hold on me. All of the things in this world I will only use and release for God's glory. Does that make sense? It's a shift, it's a small shift, but it's making sure that um, we worship and we live only for the one worthy, Jesus. And number six, the fire of God, it speaks of in those verses. Your change is coming, says the Lord. No longer battle-worn, but you will be adorned with beauty for ashes, with a white bridal gown, silver and gold from the flame. That's what I saw. That's what the Lord revealed to me. Beautiful jewels for the glory of his name. The garment of holiness clothed with Christ and the Holy Spirit. Your battle clothes, it speaks of here, and boots will be fuel for the flame. All that pain that you've endured by faith is no longer loss, but divine, eternal gain. Will you receive by faith today God's word? Yes, you've been in that battle zone. Yes, we are called to be soldiers for the Lord. But oh, if only you could see, God says complete victory. The fire of God is coming upon you and those battle clothes and those battle boots, you are so worn and you are so torn <laughs> and you are so tired from waiting and believing. You have struggled, but the Lord says, now rest in me. I promise you complete victory and you're going to rise from that flame. The battle clothes and the battles you've been through will be fuel for the flame and you will arise as the beautiful bride of Christ, adorned in white, pure and holy, set apart for his glory. And you will wear those beautiful jewels. Gold and silver comes through pure and powerfully from the fire. And that's what the Lord is doing in your life. Stay the course, says the Lord. Just like when somebody is put on a course naturally of antibiotics, you never come off before the, say, the five-day term because you can go back and you can be worse than before. So the so it is, if we will do that naturally, spiritually, let's stay the course, let's stay God's course, let's stay in his word, let's speak, and just like you would take medication three times a day, your antibiotics if you needed to for sickness, take God's word for your sickness three times a day until you see your victory. Don't stop short of God's promises for your life. I'm going to say that again. Never stop short of God's promises for your life. That is your promised land that he is bringing you into. And many stop short of it. Many give up halfway through the course. And the Lord says, stay the course with me. I will be your healing, your health, your wholeness, your complete victory. I'm believing it for my darling mummy right now. I'm believing it for every one of you that may be struggling and suffering this Christmas time because our God is able and there is nothing that shall be impossible for those who believe will receive and you will achieve great things in Jesus' name, through the authority and the power of his word. And finally, in closing, number seven, rise and reign with me, even in the midst of every enemy. Stand still, it says in Exodus 14, verse 14, you will not need to fight in this battle. You will need not need to fight in this battle. The Lord says, I have already fought for you. The Lord himself shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The Prince of Peace this Christmas time is Jesus. He's a person. Will you hold Jesus closely, tightly and intimately? I certainly am because he promises that I am your shield. I am your compensation and I am your exceedingly great reward. He's your gift. He's the greatest present this Christmas time. His victory for your life received by faith and you will see it outworked. As you receive it supernaturally, you'll see it outworked naturally. In Jesus' mighty name, stand still. You will not flee or need to fight in this battle, but you will see the salvation of 
your God. In 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, I've lived in this of late and I absolutely love it. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Hey, God isn't about our eloquent words. I've preached many a message. I've stood on many a platform. But you know what? It's not the words without the power that are worth anything. But God's word in our mouth, released through his children, released through his kings and his priests. We are called kings and priests. We are the royalty of God. We are the royal priesthood of God on the earth. We have that powerful double anointing on our lives right now that as we speak and as we repeat his word, we release his word, his works and wonders will follow and we will see his power released because his kingdom is not a kingdom of empty words, but his kingdom is a kingdom of power. It says in the New Living Translation, for the kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk, it is living by God's power. I'm never about, I'm not interested in just speaking words for words sake, I am interested in speaking God's unchanging, undeniable, all powerful, almighty word that will always accomplish that for which it is sent to your life. And I believe that God will break off your life, every yoke, every burden, every bondage, every sickness, every financial burden from your life today, every relationship problem, God says, bring it to me, lay it down at the cross. Today I'm creating an altar this Christmas time. And will you bring your life afresh to that altar? Because I'm seeing a picture right now, it says in Romans 12, 1 to 2, uh, by the mercies of God, will you present your body as a living sacrifice within your body is your emotions it's your soul it's your mind it's your thinking it's your spirit when you bring your body you bring everything will you lay your life on the altar it says and it goes on it says do not be conformed to the patterns the ways the mess methods the messages uh, everything screaming at, at, at us from this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that we have the mind of Christ. And then it says, you will know what is the good, acceptable and perfect will of God for your life. That's what I desire for my life and family. That's what I desire for you and for your circumstances, his perfection. God will make perfect everything that concerns you as you now bring your life, your body, your circumstances, your situations, and you lay it on the altar. And as we do that, do you know what I see? I see God cannot bring, the fire will not come where there is no sacrifice. When you were the sacrifice, sometimes when I look at our wood, wood burner blazing, I realise, Lord, I am the wood, you are the flame. And I just pray now that Jesus will come and receive our lives, our all, as his sacrifice. And that the fire of God will fall and consume all for his glory. And I see that. As the fire of God falls and as we burn and blaze more and more, that the burning is burns up all of the rubbish, all the sin, all of the negative, all of the dross, all the wrong thinking in our lives at the altar is burnt and gone. But we blaze for him more and more through the Holy Spirit, fire of God. Let us blaze. Let God raise a holy remnant from that grave, from that place where we die to ourselves, where we are resurrected now this Christmas time. Talking a resurrection message at Christmas. Hey, I guess you'd say only Christine can do that, but the resurrection and the life is that is was within that little baby, was within that seed within Mary uh, that grew up to be our saviour, our Lord, just as God prophesied. The one who was with his father from the beginning, the word who spoke life into creation and said, let there be, and there was. The one with God at the creation is our Lord and saviour, Jesus Christ, who came as a baby and who died on the cross and who today is our resurrection and life within every one of us. Hey, how beautiful is our Jesus. So I didn't intend to speak this long. I didn't intend to share a lot of what I've shared, but I just give up to God now this message as a sacrifice to him. And I pray that the Lord will speak through you. He will do in you all he needs to do in your heart and in your life. And he will complete to perfection his work until the coming of Jesus Christ. And in closing, I just want to um, say, 
can read in Galatians 4 verse 7. It's beautiful. And throughout the scripture we see, in the fullness of time, Christ came. It may have seemed like it was so late. The Jewish people, they were waiting for the one to come and save them. They were waiting for their Messiah, this strong one, this king, this ruler to come and deliver them. They were waiting for their deliverer. And there they were. They'd been held captive. They were in a being ruled over by another land. Um, all sorts was got. Maybe your situation looks like it's gone on too long and too far. But in the fullness of time, Christ came. In the fullness of time, nine months after uh, the angel appeared to Mary and said that you will receive a child by the Spirit of God, the Son, the Saviour of the world, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, would be birthed through her. It took nine months. Sometimes you have to go through that incubation, incubation through that dark period, through that time of waiting, through that time of trusting through that time of it appearing like everything is wasting away before your eyes oh but he is the resurrection and the life and in the fullness of time christ came the lord would say to you as i wrap this up this christmas message now and i give it back to god as a gift from my heart to him as he poured it into me i give it back to him and i pray he pours it in by his holy spirit to every one of you may you receive Jesus Christ this Christmas time and know that in the fullness of time at just that right moment when all is ready in his he's never too late his timing is always perfect just wait God's got you in Jesus name let me pray for you oh father we love you we thank you lord for your word that breaks off every bondage and every yoke that breaks the rod of the oppressor lord that which has been used against us we now declare by the word of the Lord it is broken and Lord I thank you that all will rise from the ashes that Lord all will rise from the flame for the glory of your name Jesus that Lord your beautiful bride now clothed in garments of white the purity that is ours through the blood of Jesus Christ thank you you cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness this Christmas time I pray by your Holy Spirit you will come in and fill us and that, Lord, we will rise in your resurrection life. We will rise and we will receive, just as you said, Jesus, that you took captivity captive and you gave gifts to men. We receive your gifts, the gifts of your Holy Spirit this Christmas time for our lives. Your gifts of breakthrough, your gifts of blessings, your gifts of miracles. Lord, we are expecting you to show up and to show off in every life and in every circumstance. And I thank you, Lord, that I will receive miracle stories for your glory from your word that has gone forth today. In Jesus' name, God bless you and happy Christmas.